Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston, and this is video number five on basic line work and point data collection in Captivate. And in this video today, we're going to go over some basic line work functionality. Um, this is to augment two videos that Like has already put out. So just go below in the summary, uh, and I'll put the links below. So you can please refer to those videos; they're very, very helpful. Uh, we're going to go over today some some basic line work. Um, just like in this diagram, here we'll collect some lines with curves, some closed figures, and show a couple of tips to augment these other videos that can help you out in the field. Uh, on the CS20, we use the CS20. You have to find two hotkeys: F9 to start a line and uh, F10 to start a three-point curve. These are the functionalities we use the most, and um, so that can really speed you up just by shaving a couple seconds off keystrokes. And once again, we'll show you how to how to select the uh, line commands on the screen as well. And you might see uh, at any time I can hit function and uh, with the camera, this would be a screenshot. So we took a screenshot of an area uh, with a closed line figure, and that's how I did the screenshot just for future reference. Okay, we have a CS20 here. We create a new job called 218LW for line work. If I click on that job and go to properties, take a quick look. I got a coordinate system attached. Right now we're using the total station robotic. And um, by using GPS, we could work in state plane. And once again, code this, got my code list attached. So we hit store. Um, if I hit function home, I'm gonna take a quick look at my design job and I'll make sure that's the same. If I had a different control job with different control points, I can allocate that and pick it from the list. But right now we'll keep that as the same job. So we'll hit OK there. Let's take a quick look at our settings. We'll go down to settings, customization, hotkey. And right now I got F7 to be user app tools. That's like hidden function F6 tools to access some, some deeper functions real fast. F8 is data view and edit so we can view our lines and point data. And F9 and F10 I'm going to use as begin line and begin 3.R. These are the line commands I use the most, so with one keystroke, I can access this really fast. And I got my power search keys down here. The favorites would be my star key, so if I was in robotic mode, I could set a bunch of hotkeys I use the most for robotic. All right, um, we have set up, we already set our uh, instrument up. I'll go to the measure screen, and let's take a look at what we have on the screen here. And what we'll do now is some previous codes, I'll hit function clear all. And right now, if I zoom back out, we have, we're set up on point number one. We got a backside point of point number two. And I got some points we previous shot over here uh, for guardrail, okay? What I'm gonna do now is do a quick code for back of curve. So I'll type in BC, it'll search my code list. There's back of curve. Comes up with a uh, dot with a point. So in the previous videos, we collected point data, and now we're gonna do some line work. So right now, uh, if that was defined as line work in our code list, there'd be a, a line feature. Um, I can click on here to change it. And on here, we have begin line, uh, begin three point arc, best fit arc. Um, I'm gonna escape out of here and just show you F9 can quickly, if I hit F9, it'll quickly just change that to start a line. That really speed me up is line number one. So let's just move over to our first back of curve. And what we can do now is hit the OK button. With the new firmware, I can also click on this little arrow up here and I'll take a shot if you want to use the stylus. Point. Now it shoots that point in and uh, it's gonna start drawing that line, back of curve one. So we'll move on down. And as we move on down the back of curve, once again, I can hit OK. And now I see that line being drawn on the screen up there, okay? Now let's say there's a gap. Let's say there's a driveway. What I can do, I don't have to, do, I don't have to end that line. I'll hit F9 again. And see that it increments my point, uh, the line to line number two. And that's like a pen up. So I'll just move over to the other side of the driveway. There we go. And that's the start of the second. So I'll hit OK. I'll shoot it in. Point stored. And now... Uh, we'll just shoot one more. And hit OK again. And now if we zoom in a little bit, we'll hit this button here. We can then see a gap in that driveway. OK, 
Okay, and we're now in line two. So let's do that again. I'll hit F9, I'll be like, page up again. And then we'll move over for like another gap in the back of curve. And then this will start back of curve number three. Okay. Okay, so the next point we're gonna hit, there's gonna be three points. Uh, so we can do what's called the multi-on. The first thing I do is define them. So I've got back of curve. I've got IP for iron pipe. So it says a back of curve, iron pipe, and a wooden fence. And they'll all intersect at that same point. The wooden fence, I'll hit F9, because that's, that's a line as well. So I'm gonna move over to the intersection. And with the multi-on, I can now check all three of these and I'll store three uh, separate points for three separate codes. So hit the measure button and you'll see three different points stored. And it says attributes mandatory. So the iron pipe had an attribute, it'll automatically come up. So once again, I can say it's a three quarter inch and it's uh, in good shape and hit okay. Okay. And now what I'll do is we're finished that back of curve, I'll uncheck that, uncheck the iron pipe, and keep on collecting that wooden fence. All right, we'll hit enter, and then we'll zoom back out. And now it's, we have three points right here, and back of curve and wooden fence down here, okay? All right, um, let's move on to the next video. Had to pause it there. Someone's showing up the front door, dogs are getting excited. So let's go back to the video. Okay, so we're back and um, we collected that data. If I click up here, it says 218, same as hidden F8, you can click and it should pull the point data up. And then the last, these three points here, 111, 110, and 109, should all have the same coordinates, um, but if you edit it, they'll each have different um, page over different codes, okay? So there's the iron pipe. I can also come down here and hit the more button, and that'll show the wooden fence, back of curve, and iron pipe, okay? So I just wanna show you how uh, there's three separate points with three separate codes on that multi point. All right, so we've now collected the data, um, I'm gonna now scoot over here and we're gonna create a line real fast. So once again, I'll hit function, clear all, and I can type in BC for back of curb. Oops, let me back it up one. We'll search. And once again, if I hit F9 to start line, it's smart enough to know that the next line is line number four. So if I hit F8, we'll come down here, here's our points. The second tab over is lines, you can see all the lines here, and it's showing the length of each line and how we can create them. All right, so let's, um, we'll start with a straight line here. Okay, so we'll come on down. I'll hit the OK button, or F1 measure, or this little arrow here, and I'll start the line. And it pops up on the screen here. I'm gonna hit F10 and that's start three point arc. Okay. And it shows me here the first is telling me to hit the PC of the uh, of the arc. I'm gonna hit three points to find that arc. Now, once again, I could come in here, there's a BC best fit arc that'll do a best fit for mobile points. Um, the concern you have here is it'll draw a best line through those points, and if you're using those points for like a break line and a DTM, then we prefer to use the uh, this three point arc. Okay, so we'll hit okay. And we'll move over to the start of the curve. Okay, and then we'll hit uh, okay measure, take a shot. And then I'll say, hey, take a shot in the center of the curve. Okay, so we'll come in here. Hit okay. Let's zoom in a little bit. Point stored. And right now, pan over, zoom in. And now it's, it wants the PT or the end of the curve to go to the tangent. Okay, we'll hit. Point stored. And now it draws that curve. 
and boosted spray wall. And hit OK. Let's say that's the end, that's the end of that line function. I just want to show real quickly how to draw a, a curve. Um, once again, what we'll do is we'll hit function, clear one. And now we're going to come and hit concrete. And this is like a closed concrete pad. So we'll hit that. So point, once again, I'll hit F9 again. And we'll start a line here. Okay. So we'll hit OK. And once again, here it is here. What I'll do is we'll just zoom out just to here. And now we're drawing this concrete slab. And uh, zoom in, hit that to pan over. Now if I hit distance, it's gonna show me here, we're right here at the, uh, and I wanna draw a line from here to here to close this figure out. So what I'll do now is I'll click on this icon and this brings up all the different line commands that are not my hotkeys, and I'm going to hit close line. I'll hit that functionality there, and what I'll do now is close this figure here. So when I hit measure, it's going to close, draw a line from there to there, close that, and see how I'm making a to concrete number two. So that means that that first concrete is, is closed. So I hit F8. What we can do is go down to lines, and now we have, there it is, concrete number one. And it shows the area and the perimeter. If I edit that, I can come in here and I can change the color of that line and uh, the symbology. And once again, it shows the area and the perimeter. This is important information. I can hit function and screenshot. I'll screenshot that information store and I can pick the last point and then screenshot that information. So once again, if I skate back out and go back to my points, my last point, you see there's an image attached there, hit edit, and then come back here to images, and there's the image of, of allocated to point number 121 of that point with that information. So if we download the DBX, I'll be under the images with some important information. Also, any area that we pick up, if we're using Infinity, a report can be generated to show all the areas that we did in the field automatically. So this is a great handy tool. We had one client that was surveying all the broken back of curbs in Houston, and they surveyed multiple closed areas like this, and they can generate that report in Infinity. Okay, what we'll do now is we'll skate back out, um, and let's just uh, zoom back out a little bit. And what I did earlier was I picked up a bunch of points here. So we'll pan over. And what we can do is, if we had a bunch of points, we could actually pick those points and draw a line, okay? So I'll hit this little wagon wheel here, and then there's a select button here. So these points here, 100, 101, see how they're highlighted? Um, I'll select them again because I already want 102. So I pick those points there, okay? And then what we can do now is click down here and say create line, okay? So a new line's been created. I can call that whatever I wanted. Uh, let's say it's gravel, so I'll type in GR, gravel one. And then once again, I can uh, change the color of that line if I wanted to, okay? So I can arrow over, hit okay. Got six points in there. And now it's gonna draw a line between those points. Um, but let's say another neat thing is I can edit these lines in real time. So right now, if I come back and hit F8, um, I can go to the lines, I can remove the last two points. Let's edit that, because it's picking up from the concrete. Go to the geometry, and once again, the last two points there, I can just hit remove and remove that one and store. Let's go back and take a quick look under 3D Viewer, and once again, there's that line. And once again, I really, this should be a straight line here, and let's say 102 is a power pole. I can take 102 out, it's not going to delete that point, but I'll go back to line and uh, hit edit, and number 102, I can remove and then hit store. And once again, I go into the 3D viewer, 
And now it's drawing that line through those points. And 102, I can come back and scroll back down and change the code of, so if I type in 102 to search for it. Okay, there it is. Hit edit, page over to my code. And once again, I can change it from the original code to PP PowerPole. And that way I've drawn a line with uh, points that were shot in as points. And then I can edit that line and take points in or out in real time in the field. Um, just so it, you know, I can ground truth it to what's being collected in the field, okay? And now this data is now ready to be exported. And you can see we just, really a basic line work. We cut some lines, we drive ways, multi-line, line with a curve, closed line with concrete, and then a line from points where we edit that line to take points in or out to make sure it drives with what's on the ground, okay? So hopefully that was beneficial and answered any questions of some basic line work functionality. Just one other quick note. Let's say we came back uh, to a job that had a bunch of lines on that project. So if I hit uh, F8 for line for uh, data management, went to lines. And you see I've got a bunch of backer curves, backer curb, um, you know, one, two, three, four. So I created a new job and I had a new back of curve and typed in BC. I'm in the same job continuing on. It should automatically go to back of curve number five. But what's neat is if I hit F9, it'll come up and I can hit arrow plus or, or negative. If I went back to one that was already in there, it connected up to that previous line. What's neat, if you had a whole bunch of lines in there on a previous project and you're in a new job, I could just type in 25. So let's say I had 25 back of curves, and that's going to automatically bump up to a new line called back of curve 25. And that saves me having to go in and hit the plus sign. And I can look up my field notes and say, hey, I'll start at back of curve 25, center line 30, and quickly type them in to make sure that these are separate line commands and not jeopardize mixing with the previous data on that job that I had. So just want to show you that tip there that could save you a lot of time and frustration in the field. Okay, uh, just one quick note before we wrap up the video. Uh, we'll pull down the simulator and uh, we'll skate back out here. So once again, we did settings, customization, coding. We'll make sure we set to create line work, um, allow new codes to be created, show description, and once again, add all this prompt. Uh, you can leave the multi code on if you want to, so we'll hit OK there. And uh, under line work, if you export um, directly from the controller, you can put your line work commands here to add to it, okay? A lot of times we use Infinity to export that data to the custom ASCII file. But I just want to make sure that, that you had this create line work on. And um, so hit the measure button once again. In order to do this, we always have to be in the second tab here, okay? So once we have this one highlighted, this will allow us to do the line work commands in Captivate. So I just want to go over these basic settings uh, just to make sure that you're comfortable with that. Okay, well, appreciate you guys watching. Hope you found it beneficial. And um, until the next time, take care.